2.3. Our objective today is to graph linear equations in slope intercept or standard form. First, familiarize yourself with the graph of y equals x if you don't remember what it looks like. Some key features. The number in front is the slope. And the number we're adding to the whole thing, in this case there's nothing, so we say 0. We call that the y-intercept, and we use the letter b. In this case, the y-intercept is 0. That's a parent function. Any straight line is based off of this parent function. A bigger number for slope makes it steeper. It could also be steeper negative. And a different y-intercept just shifts the graph up or down. So we're told to graph the equation and compare it with the graph of y equals x. So I'd start with my y-intercept at 0, and my slope is 2, which is really 2 over 1. So I go up 2 over 1. And because my slope is a bigger positive number, I should be able to say that this is steeper than the graph of y equals x. And I could write that in words if I was asked to explain. y equals x plus 3. This time I've got a y-intercept of 3, and my slope is 1 over 1. So I go from that point up 1 over 1, and I can draw a line. This time my graph is not steeper than y equals x. <coughs> it's the same steepness because it has the same slope. However, the graph has been shifted up 3, and that's what I would say if I were comparing with the graph of y equals x. So concept summary. Four steps you go through when you're graphing a line. You write the equation by solving for y. We figure out what the b is and plot that point. So we figure out the slope to get a second point, And then we draw the line. It's exactly the steps we went through on the last example. We're going to do it again. Graph y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 1. So just as before, we're going to find our y-intercept, negative 1 put a dot. This time our slope is negative 2 over 3, so instead of going up 2, I go down 2, and then over 3. And a quick check to make sure I drew it right is my line is going downhill, which makes sense because I have a negative slope. At this point, you can pause the video and try these on your own, or you can do these later. Next example, go ahead and pause the video and try to figure out what's going on, and then we'll start talking about it. We can see that we're supposed to graph this. For good input values, we notice that the biggest number we seem to care about is 10. So my input might stop at 10, maybe start at 0. Nowhere specific that we have to start. By plugging those numbers in, we can see that our y values go between 42 and 92. So that gives us an idea of how we should draw our graph. Notice my y values, I don't really need to start at 0, so I'm going to use a little trick of graphing to make the graph look a little nicer. When you don't want to start at 0, you can put a little squiggly line. That means that there's a bunch of the graph that we're skipping so we don't have to waste empty space on our graph paper. I might really want to start at 40, 50, to maybe 100. For my x's, I want to go to 10. So maybe a mark every 2. And on my x-axis, I do start at 0. Now I can plot a couple points to get a line. When I plug in 0, I see that I get 42. When I plug in 10, I see that I get 92. And I can draw a line connecting them. It says use the graph to estimate the body length, except I already kind of know what it is when we plug in the 10. But we can also verify that on the graph by seeing that we get a little bit bigger than 90. I could estimate the walrus's length at any other number between 0 and 10 with this graph, too. If I went to 6, looks like I'm somewhere between 60 and 70. And if I were to plug in 6, 
uh, to get exactly 72. So the graph is good for helping estimate values. And to use our correct units, that 92, we don't want to just say 92, we want to use the correct units, which would be calf's age. Now the calf's age is the input. The output is the body length, so 92 inches. That's when the calf is 10 months old. At this point, you can pause the video and try this on your own, or you can do this later. Our last idea here today is graphing using standard form. That means when x and y are on the same side of the equal sign. This time you don't want to get y by itself. You just want to get x and y on the same side of the equal sign. Then plug in 0 for y to get your x-intercept. Plug in 0 for x to get your y-intercept. It's a real fast process if you're in standard form. We'll see that in just a moment. Lastly, of course, we draw a line to connect our points. To figure out our x-intercept, or to figure out our y-intercept, we just pretend that x isn't there because we're plugging in 0. I see 2y equals 10, so y must equal 5. Similarly, if I want my x-intercept, I plug in 0 for the y, and I see 5x equals 10, so x must equal 2. I can draw a line. x equals 2, y equals 5, draw a line, done. We don't have to find x-intercept. We don't, or we don't have to find the slope at all. The slope is still there. You can see that we're going down five over two, so the slope is negative five over two, which you can verify by getting y by itself. But we don't need to do that in order to graph it. Kind of a side thought: graphing horizontal and vertical lines. If you've got y equals something, that's just a line that's flat through that number. X equals C, or C could be any number, is a straight up and down line right through the dot where X equals whatever C is. We'll see that in our last example. So Y equals 2. All we do is go where Y equals 2, put a dot, draw a line through it. Done. Part B, we want a line where x equals negative 3. We go to where x equals negative 3, put a dot, draw a line through it, done. At this point, you can try these. <coughs> At this point, you can try these on your own, or you can wait and do them later. Other than that, we're done with this lesson.